An adiabatic process is an isothermic process during which no energy is transferred in or out of the system as heat. So in this case, Q is equal to zero. And from the first law of thermodynamics, we see that the change in the system's internal energy is now equal to negative work. Well, if we rapidly compress the gas in this chamber here, and we do this so quickly, there is no time for heat to transfer into the surroundings from the gas. All the work done on the gas will go into increasing its internal energy. Now, earlier in this video, I talked about an isothermal process where we compress the gas very slowly and allow time for the heat to transfer out of the system. And in that case, the change in internal energy is zero. But if we compress the gas incredibly quickly, and this type of adiabatic compression occurs in internal combustion engines, there is no time for heat to be transferred to the surroundings. The same is true when you release gas from a pressurized can. The gas rapidly expands as it comes out of the nozzle and there's no time for heat in the surroundings to transfer into the gas. So normally the pressurized gas as it comes out the nozzle feels cold because it rapidly reduces in temperature as it expands. Heat transfer can also be very close to zero if the system is very well insulated from its surroundings, in which case we don't need to rapidly compress or decompress the gas. Let's draw a PV diagram of an adiabatic process. We can see that an adiabatic process looks very similar to an isothermal process. And if you remember back to the isothermal process, is where the temperature remains constant. So in this PV diagram, I've included an adiabatic process and an isothermal process to compare the two. And again, we've got pressure on the y-axis and a change in volume on the x-axis. I've also got two pistons here to show you what's happening as we're moving from state A to state B or to state B prime. So at state A, the initial state, the pressure and the volume is the same. And as we're going to state B, the volume is increasing. So the system, the gas, is doing work on the piston. But notice here, for the isothermal process, at the final state, state B prime, even though the volume of both chambers are the same, the change in volume is the same, the pressure is greater. Now, why do you think the pressure is greater for an isothermal process compared to an adiabatic process? Well, the pressure is higher because for an isothermal process, the temperature doesn't change. In other words, the internal energy of the system is the same between both states. But for an adiabatic expansion, because it's so rapid, there's no time for heat to transfer into the system. And therefore, the internal energy drops. If the internal energy drops, the idle gas has less kinetic energy, and therefore there's less pressure within the chamber. You can also see here that the areas under the curve between the isothermal and adiabatic processes are different. So an adiabatic process has a smaller area than the isothermal process, even though the final volumes are the same. Now the isothermal process does more work on the surroundings than the adiabatic process. And this is down to having more internal energy in the system. The internal energy within the system doesn't drop and therefore the pressure doesn't drop.
if we wanted to calculate the work done under an adiabatic curve, we can use this equation, where Ti is the absolute temperature before the process starts, and T sub F is the absolute temperature after the process has finished. And again, N represents the number of moles of gas in our closed system, and C sub V is the molar heat capacity at constant volume. This has a specific value for a monoatomic ideal gas. And C sub V is 3 over 2 multiplied by the universal gas constant. And this 3 here comes about from the number of degrees of freedom a monoatomic gas has, or the atoms in a monoatomic gas has. So let's say we have one mole of ideal monoatomic gas in a chamber at an initial temperature of 500 Kelvin. And after an adiabatic compression, the temperature rises to 1200 Kelvin. What is the work done on the gas during this rapid compression? Because our equation here calculates the work done by the gas and we want to find the work done on the gas, we simply add a minus sign. And what this does is it flips the final and initial temperature variables around. So now we've got the final temperature minus the initial temperature, or simply the change in temperature. So let's plug in our values into our equation here. And we find that the work done during this adiabatic compression is 8,730 joules to three significant figures. Because no heat is transferred in or out of the system, the change in internal energy is equal to the work done on the system. So the system has gained nearly 9,000 joules of energy.